This is the Sitam Worship Service. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to our Sitam Broadcast Service this Sunday. Of course, being Mother's Day, a very special day. And I'm here with Bishop David Oginde just to kind of hear his reflections on this day and some of what you can expect throughout the service today. So, Kari Busana, uh, Bishop, and good morning to you. Morning and thank you. Yes, and yes. Uh, today being Mother's Day, I understand actually we have uh, ladies leading the service today. Yes, today is a very special day because mothers are special people. Mm -hmm. I think um, most people would refer to the, what their mothers taught them when they were young, uh, the discipline, the good things, and the, so on. And people rarely talk about fathers, even though fathers play a very big role yeah. in the lives of, uh, of us all. Mm. Um, so today we want to remember our mothers and whatever uh, they have input in my, our lives mm -hmm. so that we can celebrate them. I'm remembering my mother. You know, so many people think that when it's Mother's Day, I should remember my wife, uh -huh. but it is really my Mother's Day. Yes. And uh, we want to celebrate mothers. We want to say thank you for the uh, burden that you carry, the load that you carry. Uh, mothers, I think God just gave you so much energy, mm -hmm. so much strength so that you can run the home and today really is just to say kudos, thank you for the great work that you do. And we are praying that even in this season, as we are all locked in and locked down, I know you are doing a lot of work. Yeah. May God give you very special grace. This service is particularly uh, focused on you and we are going to have a great time. We want to welcome each and every one of us, even those of us who are not mothers, you have a mother somewhere. Let's celebrate, welcome and enjoy the rest of the service. Absolutely. And indeed, as you've mentioned, considering the times that we're in, we're hearing a lot of ladies are saying they're really tired. They've been cooking, they've been cleaning, they've been taking care of the children. Just a lot for them to be doing today. And maybe there's just a word of encouragement as far as the grace that God can provide for them, even in this season. It is true that uh, there's a lot of work for ladies, especially taking care of the home. We want to pray that God will give you very special grace. I think of uh, Timothy, who is reminded of the faith that was in the mother and the grandmother. Uh -huh. May you be that kind of a mother, a grandmother to somebody that they can be referred to in the future. May God give you very special grace even as we pray for you during this Mother's Day. Absolutely. And you know, of course, ni Mother's Day, lazima tutumeko salamu pia. I know you mentioned your mom. Hopefully she's watching. You should tuma some salams to her. Ah, I hope she's watching <laughs> back in a bokeh. Thank you, mom. God bless you for taking care of me. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and let me also do the same and wish a very happy Mother's Day to my own mommies, uh, Mrs. Sarah Mondi and also Anna Maure. God bless you. And to all the mothers, mothers in waiting, may God bless you and do enjoy this service. Amen. Welcome to the Satan Broadcast Service, CBS. Good morning. It is a joyous chance Sunday, the second Sunday of May. We thank God for you as we usher in to worship and we want to invite you for worship that lifts the soul as we trust God to worship Him this morning. And we invite you wherever you are within the country, without the country, that the Lord is going to minister to us together. Worship Him. Can He help us to worship the Lord in a manner that befits the Sunday of today? Yeah. Somebody give the Lord a shine on praise. Yeah. Our God is worthy. Yeah. He is worthy to be praised. Oh. Say every praise. Yeah. Say every word of worship. With one eye. Yeah. 
a yes and amen. And today we sing, Amen, 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 Amen,
you can just worship the Lord and celebrate with a clap. Clap, 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 clap. And what a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms And what a blessedness What a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, 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 leaning Safe and secure safe and secure, and secure. We thank you, O Lord, for you have done great and mighty things, O God. We thank you that every knee will bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord. We proclaim your name this day. We proclaim your name this day. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Jumbo, the filo, yeah, yeah, asilo, iweza. One ni jumbo.
is only one name with power to change. With power to save. See, there is only one name. 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 Indeed, our God is a champion and he reigns forevermore. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for today. 
We thank you for the worship that you've helped us to reflect upon your glory, your beauty, even as we gaze upon your face. We thank you that you've been in charge even during the trying time of this season. You've remained to be faithful. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your sustenance. And Lord, indeed, you are a champion and you reign forevermore. We shall forever be grateful to you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you once more time for tuning in through Hope FM, Hope TV, and various social media that you are watching us from the comfort of where you are, where the Lord has disposed you this morning. And we are glad that you are watching, and we thank God for you. Indeed, we have been running this service for corporals for a couple of Sundays, and we are glad that God has been ministering to you in a very special way, and we are convinced beyond no reasonable doubt that God is at work in the midst of all that is taking place. And just to get in touch of some of the things that have been happening and more details on what is happening at SITAM, please watch this clip. Welcome to the SITAM Broadcast Service, CBS. To each and every one of you receiving us on Hope TV, Hope FM, and those of you streaming live at Satan Church Online, serving you throughout this special season on air and online. We are so glad you could join us today for this special family service. We want to remind our youth that there is a special youth service every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Our children can also enjoy Sunday school in age-appropriate services every Sunday, ages 5 and below at 9 a.m., ages 6 to 12 at 9.20. Prepare your children in good time to enjoy their services before joining the family service at 10 a.m. Please note that an online service is just as powerful as being in a physical church building. To benefit from the service, prepare your mind and heart to hear from God, avoid every distraction and participate actively in the service. Our God is Emmanuel, God with us. He is present with you right where you are. Our need for prayer has never been greater than in this season. Please join us on Wednesdays for the midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. Coming to you on Hope TV, Hope FM and live streamed at Seatum Church Online. Come let us call on the name of the Lord for our families, the nation and the world. Are you in a safari group? If not, you're missing out on great spiritual fellowship and support from fellow believers in your area. Many small groups are connecting through various social media platforms and meeting by Zoom. If you are not in a safari group, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers that's 0784277277 on our Airtel line and 0728221221 on our Safaricom line and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Do not let this lockdown lock you out of fellowship. If you're in need of any pastoral support, please get in touch with your local pastor. You can also contact us on our WhatsApp numbers that's 0784277277 on Airtel line and 0722221221 on our Safaricom line. You can also connect with us through our social media handles. Please indicate your name and the assembly you attend. God bless you and thank you for staying with Sitem Broadcast Service. Enjoy the rest of the service. We're now going to a session of prayer. The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not faint. And as the Bible exhausts us in the book of Psalms 100 verse 6, the Bible says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. Your word says in the book of Psalms 100 verse 6, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so this morning we want to thank you and to give you praise. We thank you that you have given us life. We thank you that you have given us breath. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in you. We thank you that you are in control of this day, our God. You are in control of this season, of this time, of this year. We are thankful to you, O oh God. 
Your word says in the book of Job 42, 2, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Father, we praise you and worship you because you rule and you reign over the affairs of the earth. We thank you, O God, even this morning, as we join the angels in heaven, we join the 24 elders bowing down before your throne in worship and thanksgiving. We thank you, our Lord and our God, because you are seated on the throne. This morning we thank you because you are a holy God. We recognize your holiness. We recognize your righteousness, O oh God. And we come this morning also recognizing that we have sinned before you. We repent before you for every sin that we have committed, O oh God. Forgive us our mistakes. Forgive us our failures. Forgive us for every besetting sin, every habit that doesn't please you, O oh God. We ask that you will forgive us where we have not even had faith, enough faith as we have come before you. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, verse 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith it is impossible to please God. And so this morning we repent for lack of faith, for unbelief, for complaining, for not seeing what you are doing in your world, even this season. Father, we ask that you will forgive us this morning. We ask that you will forgive us for leaning solely on our own understanding, yet we have not walked this way before. Forgive us, O Lord God. Your word says in the book of Proverbs 3, 5, that we should acknowledge you in everything, Lord, leaning not in our own understanding. And so, Father, we ask that you will forgive us where we have leaned on our own understanding. And you will forgive us, O oh God, where we have thought that we have been this way before. Father, we ask that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, O oh God. We ask that you would be merciful to us this morning. Wash us, transform us by the renewing of our minds, even as we come before you today. Father, your word says that we ought to pray for all men in the book of 1 Timothy 2, 11. And we want to just bring the body of Christ before you this day. We want to pray for believers in this nation. We pray for believers all across the world. We pray that, Lord, we would be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. We pray for those that are on the verge of giving up, even in these difficult days, that you would strengthen us. You would strengthen us in this time. We pray, oh God, that you will restore to us the joy of your salvation, even during this season, oh God of mighty. We pray, our Father, because you have made us a kingdom and priests unto our God, according to Revelation 5.10, that, oh God, we would be effective in our mission as agents of the kingdom, even during this time, critical to the expansion of the kingdom, that, Father, you would strengthen us for what you have called us to do and to be in this season, O oh Lord our God. We pray for the peoples of the nations that do not know you, our Father. Your word says in the book of Psalms 2, verse 8, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations. And so this morning, Father, we ask for the nations in accordance to your word. We pray that the peoples of the world will come into your light. Those that are seeking you because they do not understand what is going on in this season, that, Lord, they would come to your light. We want to pray for the nation of Kenya, O oh God. We want to declare that you are exalted over this nation, O oh God. We want to pray that your plans will stand firm forever in this nation. We ask that, Lord, you would intervene in our economic situation. You can see the hopelessness and the despair. We ask merciful God that you would come through, that you would intervene because you are a good, good father. We ask that, Lord, righteousness would exalt this nation because that is what your word declares in the book of Proverbs 14, 34, that a righteousness exalts a nation, but a sin is a reproach to any people. We submit our leaders to you, O God. They are your servants to do us good. We pray for them. We pray for the decisions that they have to make, even during this season, each one of them, that they would experience your hand of wisdom, leading them and guiding them in the name of the Lord. Your word says in the book of Psalm 62, 5, 
Yet my soul finds rest in God and my hope comes from him. And so this morning we want to declare that our souls find rest in you and our hope comes from you. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Jean, for taking us through that time of intercession. We are glad that you prayed and various prayer items have been presented before the Lord. It is one of those times that now we want to join the segment of worship through giving. And let's pray for that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the provision that you've given unto us. Indeed, you've continued to sustain us and bless the works of our hand. We bring here a token of part of what you've given to us as part of worship and acknowledging you as the sovereign, the giver, the sustainer of our lives. So we thank you for the giving of your people. Lord, we pray that you continue to nourish your people even in times of what we are doing. Lord, we continue to get as we worship you in various ways. Thank you for giving us one what to present you today. And as we give this to you, Lord, we pray that you use it for the expansion of your kingdom and for the glory of your name. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we, we want to, in terms of giving, we, this is various ways of giving. Please watch this clip. <laughs> But time has come to worship God through our giving. Please prepare yourself to give. We want to thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these difficult times. We have seen a true demonstration of the Macedonian church which gave cheerfully and generously in spite of their own desperate situation. We pray that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. During this season, we have a common payment platform for everyone for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and also for our visitors. Please make all mobile payments through our M-Pesa and Airtel Money pay bill number which is 933-934. For our account name, please indicate the CITAM assembly you attend. If you are not a member of any CITAM assembly, just write offering in their account space. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfer or press link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the bank, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch, our account number 011-280-617-63900, the SWIFT code, K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every support you give, whether big or small, to keep the ministry running. God bless you. Thank you. It is now that wonderful time of our service just to listen to God's word, to get to hear what the Lord is getting to us this morning, and we are glad that you're on that time. And to bring to us God's word is our senior pastor for Sitam Embakasi, the Rev. Juliet Mahogo. But before then, we are going to have a special music by our sister Eunice Njeri. Welcome. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my name is Reverend Juliet Mahogo from Sitam Embakasi. I am honored to share the word of God today. I want to acknowledge the Sitam broadcast service, acknowledge my own husband and family members and the Sitam Embakasi Church family. Many prayer partners and friends, every listener and viewer from Kenya and abroad. Today, uh, we are addressing the topic, families in lockdown. But I have named it, no wasted experiences. There is a word that is on the lips of people all over the world today, coronavirus. And we are asking ourselves, where did it come from? Who is to blame? It hit the world in quick succession. We had about China, Italy, America, Spain, Kenya, and we were left with the question, how? What is this? Why is it happening? Now we have what people are calling a new normal. Quarantine, self or otherwise. Washing hands. We thought we knew how to wash hands, but we are learning to wash them in a new way. Sanitize. 
Somebody recently said even a two-year-old now knows how to tell dad and mom, sanitize. Masks. Can you imagine? Before this time, if you saw somebody wearing a mask, you could almost twist your nose. It's like, what do you want to show us? But worst of all is social distancing. And as a pastor, I completely identify with that. We love to say, hug the huggables, shake the shakables, do high fives, greet your neighbor and tell them, like in the church where I preach, I normally tell them, greet your neighbor and tell them, Pastor Juliet greets you. Greet the other one and tell them the same. And now we have to tell each other, be satisfied with that. Greetings from a distance. And we can argue, we are Africans. This is so unusual, it's so uncommon. But the greatest one that hit the most is the one of stay home. You are in lockdown. And I would like us to survey a few issues that have affected families in lockdown. And I appreciate my Mbakasi Church family and my friends and prayer partners for giving me real information from the ground. And these are some of the things that they raised. Loss of livelihoods. So we stay at home and we eat what? Men, husbands, single mothers, singles are all asking, how do we provide for ourselves and our families. Ordinarily, when we have time on our hands, we love to eat. Now food is rationed. We love to travel. We love to visit one another, friends and relatives, and we love to spend, to shop. Now we have time, but we have little or no money. We cannot even travel. There is boredom, there is anxiety, there is stress, and even depression. When we look at the medical personnel, I remember this friend of mine who is a single mother of one, and she's a medical person. And she was asking me, Pastor, how do I social distance with my only child? How do I tell her, don't kiss mommy? And you can tell the, the fear and the anxiety that is um, upon the medical personnel. What about the bereaved? I tell you, if there was a time, if only we had a way of saying when people should die, we would say this is not the time for people to die. What a time to be bereaved and what a time to grieve. Or about church. Did you ever imagine that a time would come when you would not be able to go to church? I personally never considered it. Going to church was so normal. It was like second nature. Now we cannot even go to church. And for some, the only family they have is a church family. Some have confessed, I have never missed church in my life. What about our children? Confusion. I remember one recently saying, Koyona, Koyona must go. They don't know, is it Koyona? Is it Corona? They have no idea. But they know that there is fear. They know people are dying. They are wondering why dad and mom are at home most of the time and they are used to going to work. They can't understand why they cannot go to school. They are missing their teachers. They will not play with their friends. And by the way, may I tell you now something that I learned, that play is the work of children. So you can imagine containing two, three, five, seven-year-olds in a confined space and they cannot play. This is what family lockdown is all about. Not to mention the singles and the young, isolated from their friends and from their peers. We cannot talk about the loneliness they are experiencing and the boredom and the temptation of spending so much time on social media and the possibility of making wrong decisions because of the isolation. So we can ask ourselves, all this time we have together as families, is it a blessing or is it a curse? I remember interacting with some of, of our leaders at Sita Membakasi and one leader, a man was saying, pastor, spending all the day in the house is abnormal for us as men. We are not used to that kind of thing. 
and then getting stuck with this person or with these people all day long and all night. How do I cope? How do I behave? Because sad to say, in many occasions, we belong together, but we do not have connections. Our relationships are weak. Perhaps we have not invested in them or we may not value them. And I would ask, even as you listen to me, as you view, has work and entertainment become an escape route for you? Not to mention the differing expectations of family members leading to friction and sometimes even physical violence. But all is not dark. There, is, there are many benefits of this lockdown. And those who have chosen to look for them, they have found them. And I've heard people say, we now have catch-up time. So families are eager to do the things they always desire to do, and they had no time to do them. They can play together. I remember this person telling me, Pastor, I've lost four kilograms of weight because of playing with the children. There are those who are praying together because when we are in this situation where we don't really know what to do, how long it will last, where this or that is coming from, we pray, we turn to God. And there are many, many families that have taken the time to pray together. Others are looking into the word of God to find the meaning of this experience. And they are searching the scriptures together. Others are telling stories, cooking, developing hobbies like painting, writing, and so on. And so I'm just painting a picture of what families in lockdown, in our local situation, are going through. And I doubt whether it is different where you are right now. Then we need to ask ourselves, why would God allow a family lockdown? And I would like us to look at some lessons from the Bible. There are actually many examples of lockdowns, like the one of Noah and his family and the animals. The children of Israel were in a lockdown of sorts in the wilderness for 40 good years. But for this pur the purpose of this message, I've looked at three examples. One of them is the Passover. And as I center on these passages, I would like you to, to consider the lesson, what God was doing in each of these lockdowns. In Exodus chapter 12, which I will encourage you to read in your own time, each man was supposed to take a lamb for his family. He was supposed to slaughter it and apply some of the blood on the sides and the, and the tops of the door frames of the house. And the scriptures say, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This was the Lord through his servant speaking. Not one of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. The Lord will see the blood and will pass over that doorway. And listen to this, he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. In the Passover, we find that the lockdown preserved families. And as somebody was sharing with us recently on the WhatsApp, you are not to step out at all to take any selfies with the enemy with the destroying angel. The blood of Jesus Christ shields us from every scheme and devising of the enemy. Revelation 12, 11 tells us they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the second example that I pick is of a family, Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus. And my reference is Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 to 15 and 19 to 23. And uh, please take your Bible, open to that scripture, and we will read it together. 
Actually, you can read the whole of chapter two of Matthew, but because we don't have much time, I will just center on the scriptures that concern this message. And so I'm reading from verse 13. When they had gone, this is the Magi. They had come and visited the baby Jesus and they had brought precious gifts. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. It's not known whether he stayed for years. Some people say he stayed, he stayed for five to seven years. Others say he stayed for months. It's not clear, but it was until God told him. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet out of Egypt, I called my son. I'm jumping to verse 19, the return to Nazareth. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. I would encourage you to read the rest of the, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 2 to get the whole gist of what we are looking at. But now back to Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus. Initially, Joseph was not even sure about the virgin conception. And the scriptures tell us he thought of quietly divorcing Mary without drama. And as he would say in our Kiswahili, Bila drama. Mary herself was initially fearful of being an unwed mother. Both of them were young parents. One of the commentaries says the minimum marriageable age at that time was 13 years for men and 12 years for women. Now imagine here they were, young parents faced with the responsibility of raising not just any ordinary child, but the promised Messiah. Then the angel appears to Joseph in a dream. Now, some of you women, I don't know how you would react to such a situation. When your husband says, the angel appeared to me in a dream and says, get up, take the child. Please note, the angel appeared to Joseph and his mother and escaped to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. God sent this family to a lockdown and this in a foreign country, completely isolated from their close family and every support system that they knew. Why did he do that? Because their child was in grave danger. Herod the Great, who had been given the title King of the Jews by the Roman Senate, actually planned to locate Jesus and eliminate him. He loved power and he was considered a usurper by the Jews. So serious was this threat that Herod ordered the killing of all baby boys two years and younger in and around Jerusalem. I want to speak to you, parent, who is listening or viewing. Whether you are a single parent or you are a couple, the devil is actually after our children. Let us learn from Joseph and Mary to protect them and to discern, this is what I see Joseph doing. He discerned the voice of God. As it were, his ear was tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then he led his family, a man leading his family to obey God, 
not only completely, but rapidly or quickly. It is also noteworthy. And this, I'm sure, will, will benefit those who are younger, those who are single, whether they are widows or single mothers or single, single. It is noteworthy that Joseph had no intimate relations with Mary until after Jesus was born. That, I'm sure, is a lesson to us who, when we are under stress, we may be tempted to seek comfort in strange arms. The family of Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus were preserved so that the purposes of God could be accomplished, thus securing our salvation. And the final example from the Bible is about the early church, and I'll go over this quickly. Acts 1, 4 to 5, and also verse 8. You can read it in your own time. The Lord Jesus told his disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will receive power, verse 8, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4 and forward says, when the day of Pentecost ca came, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And the scriptures tell us all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Later in that chapter 2, Peter spoke a powerful message. And the scriptures say he warned the people. He pleaded with them. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. As we consider this topic of no wasted experiences, I would want to give you some take-homes or some things to think about and work on. And the first one is this, are you ready for the eternal lockdown? The coronavirus has caused us to be locked down as families, but there's another corona that is worse than the coronavirus, and that's the corona of sin. As far as testing is concerned, we, are, we have all tested positive. Romans 3.23 tells us all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, like corona, the real coronavirus, sin kills and can kill very, very swiftly. Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is actually eternal life to those who receive Jesus. There are two possible destinations, heaven or hell, and there is no movement between them. Uh, Luke 16, 26 tells us that there is a great divide. In the story of the rich man and Lazarus, here is a conversation and it says, where you are, you cannot cross over to us. Between us and you, a great divide has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot. Please take note of the word cannot. That means even if they wanted, it would not happen. Neither can anyone cross over from there to us. But when it comes to the corona or sin, I, want, I have good news for you. We have a vaccine that is already available. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Pastor Kutio last Sunday, told us about a debt which no bank, including the World Bank or even the IMF, can cancel or write off. And the corona of sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus can cancel that sin. In, in the words of a famous hymn, it says, Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I would want to ask you, as you listen to this message, as you view this message, are your sins washed away? Is Jesus Christ your savior and your friend? Somebody said there is no key that ever fitted a lock better than Christ's 
fits a sinner's heart. Now, most of us like to have best friends. And I want to introduce to you a best friend who can be with you forever. The Bible says he's one who sticks closer than a brother. In the words of another hymn, he says there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There is no one else who can heal our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. And in these times of lockdown, when we cannot reach out to even some of our immediate families or our friends, there is a friend who is with us every hour. There is not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. Some of you, I'm sure, are going through a dark night, especially the people who have been bereaved, even in this time of COVID-19. And the hymn encourages us, there is no night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus, our dearest friend, knows all about our struggles and he will guide till the day is done. The worst isolation, my listeners, my viewers, is to be eternally isolated from the Lord. The second thing I would like you to consider on this one point, are you Christ's ambassador? Are you urging men to be reconciled to God? If you believe the Bible, you know that those who are outside of Christ go where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. That's what Mark 9 verse 48 tells us. And so like Apostle Peter, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to urge people. We need to beseech them. We need to pray for them and to pray with them that they would receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Somebody asked, if Christ wept for sinners, shall our cheeks be dry? I'm encouraging us not only to be saved, but also to be ambassadors of Christ, urging men to be reconciled to Christ. The second thing I would want us to take home is the need to prepare the children. The Lord desires that we place the children on a launch pad, as it were. He wants to shoot them to places. He wants to take them to divine assignments. And is, is depending on us as parents to prepare them and to nurture them. Genesis 18, 19 says, I have chosen Abraham so that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. So that, so that means a consequence. Once that is done, the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. And God had told Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3. Psalm 8 and verse 2 also says, From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the four and the avenger. One of the most um, fulfilling um, uh, clips or little videos that has been sent on, on WhatsApp is one where a young girl is in deep intercession and she was praying in our, in our language here, Kiswahili, our national language. And she was saying, Koyona, she didn't even know whether it is Koyona or Corona. Koyona Shindwe, in the name of Jesus, katika jina la Yesu. In other words, she was saying, Corona be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. And, uh, and another young boy was also interceding. And all I could hear him say is, devil, you are a liar. And you are defeated in Jesus' name. And I would encourage parents, let's prepare our children. Let's nurture them. Let's place them on a launch pad for the Lord's use. The Lord is depending on you and the Lord is depending on me. And the third thing, the final uh, take home, let's prioritize family and relationships. Let us invest in them. 
from the beginning, Genesis 2.18, God himself declared, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Then the Lord God made a woman. And you can read more, Genesis chapter 2. God was looking for companionship, for relationship, for connection between a man and his wife and between a person and their family. But we have a thief. John 10.10 10 tells us we have a thief who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But thanks be to God that Christ has come to give us life and life in all its fullness, in all its abundance. What am I saying? We need to be alert to the schemes of the enemy, to steal the joy of family and to steal the joy of relationships. He comes and plants wedges between us and we disagree for reasons we may never understand. As uh, Pastor Kutio was reminding us last Sunday, God values relationships over issues and we need to place reconciliation before resolution. First Peter 4, 8 tells us in the, and, and the, and the subheading of First Peter 4, 8 is living for God. And it says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. May I encourage us to take the time when families are in lockdown to rebuild and to uh, strengthen or perhaps even build, because if there are no structures, we need to build them and we need to strengthen them. Because Psalm 133 tells us, it is good and it is pleasant when brothers dwell together in unity. For there, where there is unity, God commands a blessing, even life forevermore. Somebody called James Westbury said this, what a man loves tells what he is. Some people love money until they grow cold and metallic inside. The story is told of this boy whose father was a consultant. And the boy asked the father one time, Dad, how much money do you charge your clients per hour? And the father, without knowing what the boy was, was aiming at, told him the figure. And then the boy decided in his heart, okay, because my dad is too busy with his clients, I'm going to save money. So he saved money until he had enough money for one hour's consultation. Then he offered that money to his father and said, dad, here is my one hour's consultation. Can I now have time with you? And this is a challenge for us, including myself. And very well-meaning people, even pastors, we are so busy doing so many things and we do not have time for the relationships that matter. We are encouraging us, even in this time of family lockdown, remember we said no wasted experiences. God has a purpose for this lockdown. Let's take the time to build our relationships. The same James Westbury goes on to say, some couples love each other until they grow to look like each other because love transfigures. And I check this word transfigure. Initially, I thought to transfigure is not a good thing. But when I checked in the dictionary, it said to transfigure is to change the shape and appearance, especially so as to make it glorious, to make it, make it exalted or idealized. And love also inspires. Now listen to this. There's no man, and I would add woman, who ever achieved greatness without the inspiration of love for someone behind him or behind her. So why wouldn't we take this opportunity of the family lockdown to strengthen our relationships and to express and build love between us? Now, I would want you to check with your family member, even right now, what do you think I value most? Suppose you had that discussion. Open and objective. What do you think I value most? I would encourage us in this time of family lockdown, 
take time to reflect, take time to evaluate our relationships, take time to enjoy each other. Who knows when we will ever get a time like this? Take time even to plan together, to invest, to save. One of the things that the coronavirus and the lockdown has exposed is actually our financial vulnerability. Somebody said that if we have planned our finances well, we need to have a six months buffer. We can live for six months without a stream of income and yet our lifestyles are unchanged. Now, how well have you rated? Let me encourage you as in this time of the lockdown, let's plan together, let's invest together, let us enjoy each other, let us build our relationships. Remember that God has the final say, even with COVID-19. Somebody said in Christ, nothing can work against us. It can only work for us. I want to close with a scripture in Job 42, verse 2. There is no plan of God that can be thwarted. Let's praise his great and awesome name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for every listener, every viewer, and particularly pray for those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And dear listener, dear viewer, you may not, not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I would like to invite you to make that decision now. And I would be so delighted to lead you in this prayer. Please pray after me, meaning it from the bottom of your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I come to you today, repentant of my sins, O oh God. I pray that you may forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. From today, make me your child. I welcome you into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be my best friend forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Allow us to pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you because nothing catches you by surprise. And nothing comes to us except that which you allow. And in this season and time, you have allowed a family lockdown. And we are locked down in all manners of ways, O oh God. But we acknowledge that this will not be a wasted experience. You're helping us, O oh God, to draw near to you. You're helping us to reorder our lives, to reorder our priorities. You are helping us, dear Lord Almighty, to build our relationships, to build our family relationships. O oh God of heaven, I ask in the name of Jesus that you who is merciful and gracious, you will help us to make the most of this season in the name of the Lord and that you will defeat and frustrate every work of darkness as you did in the Passover. You allowed your children to be preserved and you did not permit the enemy to harm them in any way. I pray that as we put our trust in you, we shall be preserved and in us and through us and our families, the purposes of God will be accomplished our destinies in Christ will be fulfilled. We give you glory and we give you honor because this is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for viewing, for listening. May the Lord bless you and continue to watch over you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Juliet, for the word. And we, we believe the Lord has ministered to us and we are going to trust God to implement those even as we continue during the week. We, we now come to the end of our service today. We want to thank you for joining us from wherever you've been tuning, or tuning on. And we thank God for you. We trust to see you again next week. Please invite other people. Tell them, know, let them know that there is service that is taking place on Sunday, next Sunday, the same time. And we trust God to minister to us. We also invite us to join our safari groups that are going on via Zoom, and we're going to continue. The Lord will minister to us during the week. Now let's have the grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you. We just want to say a very big thank you. We want to say a big thank you to our God. He has been so gracious to many of us as individuals, as families, and as a nation during this season of lockdown and anxiety. As a nation and as a continent, we have seen God hold down the spread of the coronavirus beyond the earlier predictions. He is indeed answering our prayers. We especially want to thank him for protecting our medical workers who are at the front line of fighting this pandemic. We have also seen God provide miraculously for many of us. We are therefore confident that he will continue blessing those of us in need. And now we want to thank our safari groups that have continued meeting consistently through various digital platforms, many for the very first time. Special thanks to those safari groups across the country that have reached out on their own initiative to support those in need around them. Jesus said, whatever you have done to the list of this, you have done to me. And then to all of you who have remained faithful to the Lord and have continued to give sacrificially to sustain the ministry of Satan during this season, we say a big thank you. May God continue to bless you and your family and may he shower you with the richest blessings to the glory and honor of his holy name. Amen. Amen.